This video is filmed entirely on the Sony FDR X3000, I think that's what it's called. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, uh, it's this little white action camera that you've probably heard in all sorts of blog posts. None of this video is edited, there's no, there's no external microphone, this is not edited or upscaled uh, or improved in any way whatsoever. This is the raw footage from the camera, I'm just holding it on a little tripod, cheap tripod, and walking around a field. So. And yeah, so the audio is unedited, everything you see here is raw. What I'm also going to do, so this is a, my review of the Sony FDR X3000, my review of the Sony action camera, which I've been using for the last, I don't know, six months or more, uh, and which I actually chose over the GoPro Hero 7 Black for many reasons, which I'll get onto in a second. I actually ended up buying two of the Go, GoPro Hero 7 Blacks. Uh, the first one I bought, the battery compartment was stiff, I couldn't get the battery in and out, uh, so I, turned, I sent it back thinking it was a defect. The second one I bought, exactly the same thing. Uh, the battery compartment just was too, too stiff, it was slow, there were issues, software issues, hardware issues. Terrible camera, in my opinion. However, this one, I haven't found anything wrong with this camera. The battery life, amazing. The stabilisation, perfect for me. Not as good as the GoPro Hero 7 but still more than good enough for most people and what most people would like to do. So I'm just gonna, this is just me walking by the way, holding the tripod, no stabilization has been added to this after the editing, this is just literally me walking uh, in a straight line on a bumpy field. And as you can see, and by the way, this is not in 4K, this camera, uh, this camera can film in 4K, but I'm not currently using that feature. This is just 1080p. So what I might also do is, as I talk about this camera, I might overlay some other clips that I've filmed uh, with this camera in the past, but none of them are edited. These are all, obviously I've, I've cut them, but none of them have been edited visually, none of them have had stabilisation added, and all of them have used just the stock microphone that comes with this camera and nothing else. Uh, they're also all in 1080p at 60 frames per second. So hopefully you can see from some of these clips how good this camera actually is. Now, uh, yeah, so for the most part, this is all you need to film travel videos, to film vlogs. You don't really need an external microphone at all, although you can get one, which is another benefit of this. You can plug any microphone into this. You can plug in a Rode, you know, any, any professional microphone you can, put into, you can plug into the back of this. Now, uh, so yeah, for close-ups, let me just show you my hand. You can probably see the sweat on my hand because it's a hot day. It's pretty good for close-ups, but as I said, the, the, main, the main selling point of this camera is not the close-ups, it's just how easy it is to film videos. You press one button and the camera turns on and starts recording immediately. You know, you press one other button, the off button, it stops recording and turns off. So it's, it's so simple to film videos on this, it's very easy. Not only that, but the stabilisation is really good, it's optical stabilisation, meaning something physically moves around in the lens. Uh, to keep the camera stable, whereas with the GoPro and many other action cameras, it's digital. Now, digital stabilisation is good, and in GoPro's case, very, very, it looks very professional. But they crop the image by about 10%. So the, Im the image that you're actually filming with the GoPro, when when it's stabilised and when it gets processed, is 10% smaller than you think it is. However, with this, you get 100% field of view, and it's almost as stabilized. In my opinion, it's more or less the same. However, if I was to, if I were to run, uh, you would see the difference. I'm not gonna show you that because I'm just, I'm just gonna admit it. The stabilization on the GoPro is better. It looks smoother. However, when you, when you take into account all the, other, all the other things, the pros and cons of both, this is by far the better camera, by far. It has a better battery life. It's easier to use. The, uh, the wide angle is better because it doesn't warp the corners, it just gives you the actual angle as if you're seeing it. Whereas the GoPro, it looks like a fisheye, you know? Uh, so the stabilisation, yeah, the stabilisation is good. Uh, it's more fun to use, it's easier to use, there's less, less software bugs. In my opinion, it looks better. That's debatable, of course. And uh, because it's a Sony, you get a really good sensor, high quality, great audio, as with most Sony cameras. And even if the audio is not good enough for you, you can just plug in an external mic, which is something that GoPro have been missing the point on for many years. Anyway, I'm not just gonna bash GoPro. 
Uh, I'm only talking about GoPro because GoPro is the only competitor to this camera, in my opinion. Nothing else comes close. Nothing else. So uh, that's why I'm talking about GoPro. So let me just show you some scenery here. This is just some random field, okay? And let me just let's just listen to the audio. But the cool thing is, I can just with the tripod. Look how easy it is for me to just film myself talking and then I whip it round. Now we're filming this, I'm showing you that, and then just like, it, it just feels so easy and natural to hold this thing. And I don't even need to hold it that far in front of me uh, to actually vlog because it's such a wide angle. Now in terms of the footage, I think it's pretty good. There's not much else to say about this camera actually. Uh, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put some clips of lots of other yeah, I'm going to put some clips of other travel videos over this, I think, if, if I haven't already, so you can see what it's like in different places, different scenarios, and underwater. It does come with an underwater case. Um, the battery, so the battery life, really good. I can get about an hour and a half to two hours of filming at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Very good, um, no complaints there. Yeah, I have, nothing, I have nothing bad to say about this camera, other than the fact that uh, the stabilization, if you're running or doing some things like that, it's not as good as the GoPro. That's the only downside. The only downside. Uh, yeah. So yeah, if you want to get this camera, again, then uh, click the link in the description. Have a look at it, read some more reviews. Uh, or just check out my other travel vlogs. Check out all of the video videos I've made on Transcend Travel. Uh, with this camera. Everything in the last six months has been filmed with this camera and it's all raw. None of it's been edited. Uh, it's all just been taken straight from the camera. Now where this camera really shines is a stabilization when I'm actually just talking to it like this because it somehow manages to track my face and sort of lock onto that and make everything else, you know, s smooth and stable. Anyway, yeah, check the link in the description. Leave a comment letting me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you think is the best action camera of 2019 and 2020 because in my opinion it's this even though this camera is actually three or four years old now or more uh, so yeah i hope there's a competitor to it because you know i'm a uh yeah i just like to go with the best product however sony have been so so good to me uh, over the last few years i've used about four of their cameras this is the fourth one and it's amazing it's the best best cameras that I've used, uh, certainly for travel videos and for travel vlogging especially. I can't think of anything better than this, uh, this, this Sony action camera. So, link in the description, leave a comment, see you next time.